This video explains how to find the indices of multiple, maxima and minima using the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. As a very first step in this tutorial, we need to create some example data as you can see in line 2 of the code. So after running this line of code, a new data object called VEC is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 3 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a vector which contains eight different elements. And you can see that some of these elements are the minimum values of our vector and other elements are the maximum values of our vector. So if we want to determine the very first element, which is the maximum value of our vector, we can use the which.max function, as you can see in line 5 of the code. And in this line of code, we are simply applying this function to our vector object vec. So after running line 5 of the code, you can see that the value 4 is returned. And this value shows us the first position of the maximum value in our vector object. So in this case, the first maximum is appearing at the fourth position. So if you go back to our vector object, you can see that the value 3, which is the maximum value of our vector, is appearing the first time at the position 4. However, you can also see that other values are 3 as well, and those locations are not returned by the which.max function. Similar to that, we can also return the first minimum value of our vector by using the which min function, as you can see in line 7 of the code. And as you can see, the minimum value, the first minimum value of our vector is appearing at the first position of our vector object. So let's assume that we want to return all the maximum values in our vector object. Then we can apply the code that you can see in line 9. So in this line of code, I'm using the which function. And within this function, I'm specifying a logical condition in which I'm searching for all the values that are equal to the maximum value in our data object. So if you run line 9 of the code, you can see that a vector of three different locations is returned. So the value 4 is corresponding to the first occurrence of the maximum value 3. However, then you can also see the positions 6 and 7, which are corresponding to the second and the third occurrences of the maximum value in our vector. Similar to that, we can also return multiple minimum locations in our vector, as you can see in line 11 of the code. So the only difference of this line of code to line 9 is that this time I'm using the min function instead of the max function. So if you run line 11 of the code, you can see that the minimum values in our vector object are located at the first index position and at the eighth index position. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.